Texas to build. As you all know, Congressman Jones is a member of the House Antitrust Subcommittee and the Congressional Progressive Caucus. And just yesterday, in fact, I think, was named the most active freshman member of Congress, having sponsored or co-sponsored nearly 300 pieces of legislation since taking his seat in January. In his role on the antitrust subcommittee, Congressman Jones has not shied away from demanding structural change rather than small ball solutions or calling out tech industry influence when he sees it. Congressman Jones, thank you so much for your leadership. We're excited to see what comes next and thrilled you can join us today. Uh, let me hand the floor over to you for a few minutes. Well, thank you so much, Sarah and Senator Warren for those kind words uh, and for the generous introduction. Thank you to everyone involved in the Freedom From Facebook and Google Coalition for reconvening for this truly vital work. And thank you to everyone here today for making this anti-monopoly movement a reality. We have all heard that with great power comes great responsibility. But no matter how much we wish that were true, Facebook and Google are teaching us a different lesson. With monopoly power comes no responsibility. The facts speak for themselves. By acquiring, copying, or killing rising competitors, Facebook and Google have monopolized digital advertising and their core businesses, social networking, and general search. Their power over the ad market has made a robust local and diverse press unsustainable. Their power over social media and search has amplified extremist and illegal content from white nationalism to weapon sales. They wield that power to entrench themselves even more. And who pays the price? Small and local businesses, journalists, workers, and the American people writ large. The biggest tech platforms are so powerful that as Mark Zuckerberg says, today, Facebook is more like a government than a traditional company. But Zuckerberg's online government is anything but a democracy. Facebook and Google are unelected, unaccountable, and underhanded. So we stand at a pivotal moment then for our economy and our democracy. On one hand, corporations like Facebook and Google have consolidated unprecedented monopoly power. On the other hand, thanks to you, the movement against these monopolies is stronger than at any time since the original progressive era. Now is the time to renew our work to break them up. Consider this, after decades of inaction, our nation's antitrust enforcers, from the Federal Trade Commission and the Justice Department to the attorneys general of nearly every state, have finally mobilized to hold Facebook and Google accountable in court. That is a testament to your advocacy. But as you all know too well, we cannot count on the courts alone to get the job done. After all, the judiciary paved the way for today's Gilded Age. Over a century ago, the original progressives designed our antitrust statutes to prevent the concentrated economic power that we see today. But the right-wing takeover of the federal courts that began in the 1970s betrayed that congressional intent. Judges became more fearful of the government enforcing the law than of big corporations breaking it. And the Roberts Court is the most pro-corporate Supreme Court in generations. Just last month, the court stripped the FTC of its power to win financial compensation for the victims of corporate fraud and scams. To take on these big tech monopolies, my colleagues and I on the Judiciary Committee, Subcommittee on Antitrust, are developing the most sweeping reinvigoration of our antitrust laws in a century. We are ready to strengthen our enforcement agencies. We are ready to check the sort of mergers and acquisitions that have created this crisis of consolidation, like Facebook's pivotal purchases of Instagram and WhatsApp and Google's acquisitions of DoubleClick and Android. And we are ready to end the self-dealing and abuses of power that have distorted our economy and denied small businesses a chance to compete. But even the most robust new restrictions will not be enough. To achieve real freedom from Facebook and Google, we must also break them up. Regulation and structural separation are not alternatives. 
In fact, they go hand in hand. The truth is we can only regulate these massive corporations effectively if we break them up. Without structural separation, these companies will have the same incentives to abuse their dominance that they do now, the same conflicts of interest that pit their profits against our privacy, our mental health, and our democracy. Without structural separation, these corporations will remain too big to regulate, and that is not a prediction. It is a description of their history. Facebook, for example, has been violating the law with near impunity for a decade now. In 2012, the FTC concluded that Facebook was unlawfully deceiving its users and violating their privacy. But rather than risk a long and complicated trial, the FTC settled with Facebook, ordering the company to right these wrongs. Facebook had other ideas. By 2019, the FTC found that Facebook was flagrantly flouting that settlement, yet again, because the commission felt that it could not take on Facebook in court, it settled. Sure, the commission fined Facebook $5 billion, but Facebook almost certainly has made more than $5 billion by breaking the law, a lot more. The company makes that much revenue, in fact, in a single month. Facebook and Google have learned that if they violate our laws, they won't be held accountable. They've learned that the rare times we do enforce the law, the penalties will be, relatively speaking, no more than speeding tickets. That is why successful regulation demands structural separation. Because these companies have learned that with monopoly power comes no responsibility. It is time for us to break up that power. This coalition is leading that fight. Without your years of activism, your organizing and your voices, the DOJ and the FTC would never have initiated these cases against Google and Facebook. Without your advocacy, Congress would never have devoted two years to exposing these companies' monopoly power on a bipartisan basis, no less. Imagine that. And I know that by opening this new chapter in our work today, we are setting this country on a path to freedom from Facebook and Google. Freedom from Facebook and Google is about so much more than the fate of two of the largest corporations the world has ever known. It is about freedom from an internet where the people are the products and privacy is a privilege. Freedom from an economy that puts profits over people. Freedom from the virtual platforms that enabled a real world insurrection that I and my colleagues nearly died in a few months ago. Freedom from government of the corporations, by the corporations and for the corporations. Freedom from Facebook and Google is also about the freedom to build a better world. It's about the freedom to create the economy and the democracy that we deserve, freedom to start a small business without their permission, freedom to learn about our communities from diverse, independent local journalists, freedom to build and participate in online platforms that will not exacerbate systemic injustice, but unwind it. In short, freedom from Facebook and Google is about freedom, period. So I'm honored and excited to be with you in this work Know that it will not be easy, but we will break them up together. Thank you. Thank you so much, Congressman, for those remarks. I think, you know, we can only be as successful uh, with leaders like you in Congress who are willing to stand up to power and the example that you've set in just a few short months has been really inspiring to us as we reconvene and look towards solutions in the future. Um, let's spend a few minutes, if you don't mind, just asking a few questions. I think one of the things that we hear a lot when we talk to other members is, you know, how does this issue resonate in my district? How do we see the manifestation of Facebook and Google's power in my district tangibly? How is it affecting people's lives? And a lot of us uh, on this call sit here in DC. A number of us are also grassroots activists that are really deeply connected with different affected communities. So I'm curious from your perspective, as you go out and talk to your constituents about these issues. Uh, how do you see it resonate? What is manifesting and how does that connect with the suite of solutions, particularly breakups um, that we're talking about today? You know, it, it, it's a question that I think brings out something essential. And that is Google and Facebook are multinational corporations, right? Uh, but their dominance has local impacts in every community in the United States. 
I think about the free press, a cornerstone of our democracy. Today, Google and Facebook control nearly 60% of U.S. advertising revenue, and their monopoly power has devastated newspapers, magazines, local broadcasters, and other outlets. When I think about the impacts on New York's 17th congressional district, uh, my district, which includes Westchester and Rockland counties, I think about the challenges local journalists are facing making enough money to serve their communities. In my district, that means publications like Black Westchester. Before Black Westchester, many officials and organizations in the county were not reaching communities of color or even listening to them. And today, Black Westchester helps bridge that gap. That's why Black Westchester has always been available online for free. But lately, the ad revenue they depend on is harder and harder to come by. And as the antitrust subcommittee's report makes clear, that's because of how Facebook and Google have consolidated control over the digital advertising market. It's just one reason why it's so important that we break up these two massive corporations. Unless we restore competition to the digital advertising market, we cannot reinvigorate the press our democracy depends on. That's a huge focus for us too. I mean, we see the way that Facebook and Google have systematically rolled up all of the advertising dollars and resulted in a real crisis uh, uh, in newspapers and journalism. But also this kind of leads into my next question for you, which is disinformation and misinformation and its impact on the communications ecosystem, particularly in the context of a strong democracy and well-informed citizenry. Um, you know, I think a lot of folks on this call in particular have been real leaders in fighting disinformation that the platforms generate and profit from. Uh, and we're starting to see, I think, an important uh, strategic partnership between those organizations and for the organizations that have traditionally been thinking about business models and breakups. So from your perspective, can you share how, and you know, as you mentioned, you were in the Capitol you know, on January 6th, and I think it was remarkable to see how quickly it was accepted that you know, the business models of Facebook and Google, both over the longer term set the stage for that, and then were critical tools in the planning and execution of that. Uh, uh, that attack, but how do you kind of think about disinformation and misinformation and breakups and re the relationship between that policy remedy and that particularly, I think, acute and dangerous problem? Yeah. Um, you know, let us acknowledge that right now, Facebook and Google control much of the essential infrastructure for uh, what should be our democratic discourse. Whether someone wants to plan a, a peaceful protest or launch a violent insurrection at the Capitol. Uh, Facebook and Google provide the platforms and wield the power to decide who can use them and how. According to Facebook's own research, nearly two thirds of the time someone joined an extremist group, they joined because Facebook's own algorithms recommended it. And YouTube, which obviously is owned by Google is little better. And so th there are three reasons breaking up Facebook and Google is so important in addressing these content moderation problems that, that you alluded to. Uh, first, the more competition there is for online platforms, the more options all of us have. Our democracy won't be captive to the rules set by one or two unaccountable corporations. Second, the more competition that there is, the more pressure even the dominant platforms will face to develop the rules we need for fair, equitable, accurate, and inclusive online spaces. Uh, and third, breaking up Facebook and Google will make it easier than ever to compel these companies to actually follow the law rather than get away with profiting from enabling illegal conduct. Uh, and let me add one final point that's often left out of the content moderation conversation. Content moderation requires content moderators. These are real people who view vast volumes of troubling, often traumatizing content that's posted on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, or elsewhere. Facebook's monopoly power has enabled it to get away with abusing and exploiting these workers, subjecting them to brutal hours and denying them the fair pay and the mental health care that they deserve. Breaking up big tech then is also about justice for our workers. Absolutely. Um... Let me ask you just a few more questions. So, 
You uh, joined the House Antitrust Subcommittee a few months ago when you were seated in Congress. Uh, and obviously over the last two years or so, they undertook one of the most rigorous uh, investigations into monopoly power, uh, I think in the last 50 years, is fair to say, and came out with a suite of recommendations that are laying the groundwork for what you spoke about in your remarks earlier, um, aggressive and bold legislative reform. What, I guess it's a two part question, what sets of recommendations most resonated with you coming out of that? And, and you feel, and do you feel like are most important? And then what do you see in terms of the path forward for those bold uh, and I think essential uh, legislative moves uh, over the course of this Congress? Well, let me, let me start by commending Chairman David Cicilline and his entire team uh, for what I think we all recognize was a comprehensive and compelling report. And now it's been an honor to join the committee as it continues its investigative work, holding power to account, oftentimes on a bipartisan basis. And I was, of course, proud to, to vote to approve the report during the full committee's markup last month. This report on competition in digital markets is over 400 pages long. But to me, its message can be summarized in approximately two sentences. The big tech companies are too powerful. And the solution to that problem is to break them up. So I'm excited that the full Judiciary Committee approved a report expressly recommending that Congress enact legislation facilitating structural separation and imposing line of business restrictions. To me, that means the committee recognizes structural separation must be a top priority. Uh, additionally, I would say that I'm also focused on ensuring we prevent mega mergers of the kind that created this crisis of consolidation in the first place. And we don't, if, if we do not impose clear rules against these mergers, we are inviting the formation of monopolies in the future. And let me ask you just one more question before we let you get back to, get back to work. What advice do you have for grassroots activists, for progressive organizations um, who are taking on this fight uh, so we can be most effective in supporting, I think, exactly the types of big, bold legislative changes that are urgent and necessary to solve this problem. I love this question. <laughs> Good. Facebook and Google are not going to break themselves up, right? Uh, quite the opposite, in fact. In the last 15 years or so, they've acquired upwards of a couple hundred companies without facing any meaningful pushback from the FTC. The reason Facebook and Google are even facing federal antitrust action today, finally, bolstered by suits by nearly every state attorney general in the nation, is that people and organizations like yours rose up and built a bipartisan movement demanding a new generation of trust buster. And as a member of the antitrust subcommittee, I gotta tell you, the same is gonna be true of Congress. We need you to inspire members of Congress to stand up to the corporate lobbyists. We need you to convince my colleagues that we must act now and act boldly. And above all, we need you to make the case for breaking them up. If we really want an economy and a democracy that put people over profits, we are going to need the people to show up and demand that future. Thank you so much, Congressman. I think that's a great note to end on. We're going to turn to our panel and to my colleague, Morgan Harper, but we are so excited to see you on the Antitrust Subcommittee. We're glad it seems to be a popular place uh, to be. And just, I think, thinking back to three or so years ago when we launched this coalition, it's just remarkable to see uh, the change that's occurred and the leadership that's developed. And you're uh, at the forefront of that. So Grateful for your time today and for your leadership on the subcommittee and in Congress. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you for the invitation to say a few words today. And please keep it up because you are making a difference every single day. Take care. Thanks, Congressman Jones.